Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and today I would like to show you a very beautiful uh, miniature played in 1899 in Chicago. So yes, this is one of the last years of 19th century, and we have Frank Marshall. Yes, this Frank Marshall, leading American chess player. However, uh, in 1899, he was only 22 years old. He was already quite strong player, but still not elite player of the world, and his ranking as estimated by chessmetrics.com 2465 and he's gonna play as black and just keep in mind five years later Frank Marshall won very strong tournament in Cambridge Springs uh, so definitely he's gonna become a very strong player soon and his opponent Sidney Johnston and who was Sidney Johnston okay if you know a bit about American history, maybe you heard about the, the general uh, in the 19th century history of America. Uh, not, that's not the Sidney Johnston, it's a different one. Uh, our uh, player today is going to be a Sidney Johnston from Chicago and he was a chess player. That's all we know about him. He was born in Chicago, he died in Chicago, uh, all his life he lived in Chicago and... Uh, and he was quite decent player. His estimated ranking 2414, he was 30 years old and he's gonna play as white. And he's known because he played this match uh, of 15 games with Frank Marshall. Uh, 15 games and he was not crushed by Marshall. Seven wins by Marshall, six wins by Johnston and only two draws. So quite even, so definitely Sidney Johnston knew what's going on on the board. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Johnston open with d4, we have d5 by Marshall, c4, e6, King's Gambit declined, knight c3, and now Marshall play less popular variation, knight on c6. So it's queen's knight uh, variation. Similar ideas to Chigorin defense, but uh, quite different. And especially how Marshall plays it. We have knight on f3, knight on f6, and now bishop f4 pointing uh, on c7. And now this knight can easily jump here and take a... And that would be a problem. So we have bishop on d6 by Marshall, uh, bishop on g3, and now knight e4 attacking this bishop uh, and also attacking this knight. And now uh, can white take this knight? Can, but actually it's a very bad idea. So better do not do it. So for example, knight on e4, d takes on e4, and this knight don't have really good square to move. Uh, so, for example, after bishop d6, queen d6, knight d2 doesn't really work because this pawn is hanging. And now uh, this pawn is attacked twice. So, anyway, it's very difficult to play. So, maybe d5 attacking the knight. Knight d7, uh, knight d4, and black just winning the pawn. So, uh, black have very comfortable game. And winning the pawn at the beginning... Uh, not really great idea to take the knight, so it can't be taken. This is why we have uh, e3 by Johnston, we have castle by Frank Marshall, and now bishop on d3. And here f5, stonewall. Uh, Frank Marshall liked to play stonewalls, uh, he played it many many times during his career, uh, and it's very strong structure, but there is one problem here, without the c6 pawn it's not so strong like like normal uh, stonewall. So uh, if you play against stonewall, uh, remember that you always have possibilities of play in similar style uh, like in this game. We have a3, so Johnston prevents uh, from jumping, for example, knight can jump and attack this bishop. Uh, and here we have b6, so preparing the bishop uh, to goes on b7. So we don't have c6 when the uh, light square bishop has problems with developing. Uh, but Frank Marshall found, okay, bishop b7, this is a great idea. Now I can support uh, all this diagonal and that's gonna be good. And now it looks like pawn on d5 is hanging, but actually it's not. Because after c takes on d5, black don't need to take it. First take the knight, and then uh, after exchanging, uh, everything is fine. White stands slightly better, but uh, didn't win any material. 
So Johnston improved the position first, developing move rook c1, and it's very strong move in this position. Now, uh, black has a problems, but it really requires a lot of precise calculations. So uh, I will just show you that knight on e7 uh, defending this d5 pawn would be better for black. However, we have bishop on b7, but now uh, try to think what would you do in this position? Would you take this pawn? So the answer is yes, it's good to take this pawn. Uh, this is what happened in the game. And now this variation doesn't work what I showed you before. Knight on c6, rook on c6, uh, e takes on d5, cool, but now queen can go to c2 and now the pawn is under attack, so white gonna win the pawn or can win, you know, two pieces for the rook, which is also good for white. So black would have to play something like this, uh, defending this pawn, and also this pawn uh, is defended. The problem is bishop on d6, and if queen on d6, then white winning the pawn. So uh, not really the greatest idea. So black would have to play with this ugly pawn, so white have very comfortable, very nice game. And, uh, and huge advantage here. So this is why we have e takes on d5. We have knight on d5 winning the pawn, hooray! But Marshall calculated this, but not very precisely, because he played knight on d4 with the idea of getting back the pawn. So he saw, okay, I play bishop b7, and if he takes this, I always can jump to d4 uh, and then get the material back. The problem is Johnston didn't take this knight. He didn't take this knight. He plays stronger move. What do you think? Which move could be stronger here? Bishop on c4. So he defending the knight. This knight is still under attack, so black has to do something about that, but also look at this diagonal. This is the, some problems on this diagonal, some discoveries. Uh, for now, maybe uh, not very dangerous, but it still doesn't look good for Frank Marshall. Uh, if black play king on h8, for example, so uh, just save that, uh, white simply wins the material, win the minor piece, so knight on d4. And then bishop on d5, looks good, bishop d6, queen on d6, and now knight b5 attacking the queen and attacking the bishop. So bishop is attacked twice, so winning back the material uh, and of course the game. So nothing like this can be played, okay? Uh, black has to do something. So Frank Marshall try knight on f3 with check, it makes sense. So we have g takes on f3 and now this knight is uh, hanging, okay? So Frank Marshall still have to do something about that, but what to play now? Uh, Frank Marshall play the most logical move, uh, knight on g3, okay? And there is a one problem with that. Okay, if h takes on g3, king h8, everything is fine with the black position, the game can continue, uh, white have very small edge, but it's still, you know, a lot to play. Black has a pair of bishop, it's, it's fine to be black here, uh, it's fine to play with white, the, the, the chances are equal, okay? However, the problem is Frank Marshall missed the tactic here. So uh, feel free to pause the video and find the fourth checkmate in four while I enjoy my cup of tea. Ready? Probably not very difficult to find the first move. We have a knight on e7 check. This is what uh, Sidney Johnston played. Uh, we have king on h8 because double check, so uh, king has to be moved. Uh, and what now? What would you play now? How to continue? Knight on g6 with check. Bang! And now h takes on g6 is the only move because bishop controls g8. And now, only now, take back the knight. With check, bang, and look at this. Queen h4, rook on h4, and that's all. This is a checkmate, beautiful checkmate. So Sidney Johnston 
uh, really showed <laughs> Frank Marshall how to play against uh, Stonewall. So very short game, but I hope very educational and I hope uh, you can use it uh, in your games. Uh, it's pretty, pretty common. Uh, some people play uh, Stonewall. Maybe you play Stonewall and you have to remember that C6 is quite important uh, because this diagonal uh, can be exploited by, uh, by, by white and uh, it can be very, very dangerous. Uh, so uh, yeah, more chess content is coming. So if you don't want to miss it, Press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.